All right, chapter 10-5 is the distance formula. And this is gonna come in handy when we are not given um, site like on our jump start. We were given 21 and we were given 15, right? We were given two of the side lengths and we could find the third side length, side lengths um, using the Pythagorean theorem. But what if it's not a right triangle, okay? So what if we still need to find side lengths but we don't have the Pythagorean theorem to use because it's not a right triangle. And the way you do that is by using this distance formula. And yours is a little blurry on the notes I gave you. For those at home, you just need to press pause, draw this little graphic in your notes, and then the formula. So the formula is D equals, and then all under a radical, okay? So everything that we do at, at, until the very last step all happens under a radical. It's X2 minus X1, squared. So first we're going to find the change in X's and then square that plus the change in Y squared. And so just like when we did slope, I told you guys, and if you don't do it, I'm telling you it's going to bite you. Okay. Let name your points. So we have X2, Y2, doesn't matter which one you call one and two, just make sure that once you name a, an, a pair, if I'm naming this one two, it's X2, Y2. And then I'm going to name my other pair x1, y1. And the reason I want to name them is because I want to make sure when I plug into that formula that I'm plugging everything where it goes, because everything has a very particular spot where it needs to go. Now I'm going to rewrite the formula here just so I have it on the screen because it's kind of off my screen there. So I've got x2 minus x1. So that's your change in x's and we're going to square that. Then we're going to add that to y2 minus y1, which is my change in y's, and I'm going to square that, okay? So the first part is just plugging in what goes where. So it's distance equals, and then all under a nice long radical. We're going to have the change in x's. Well, you got to look for your x's here, and I have x2 right here and x1 right here. So that would be five minus three, and I'm going to put parentheses around that, just like in the equation, and I'm going to put the I'm going to put the square sign out front or out there and then the plus sign and then another parentheses. And now I'm going to do the same thing with my Y's. Okay, I've got a Y here and a Y here and it's Y2 minus Y1. So I've got to keep my order the same as my X's. I did X2 minus X1. Now I have to do Y2 minus Y1 and that's why ordering them matters. So we're going to do two minus four and we're going to square that. Now, this is, that's just the plugging in part. This is what's really important. Write this off to the side. This is going to make or break your answer. You have to follow PEMDAS here. So PEMDAS says before we do anything, we work inside the parentheses, right? So we've got some simplifying to do inside both of these parentheses. So five minus three is two. And I'm gonna keep the square out to the side because I haven't done exponents yet. I'm just simplifying inside the parentheses. Two minus four is negative two and that's gonna be squared eventually. Okay, that is the parentheses step of PEMDAS. Now I've got to do it again. And this time I'm doing the exponent step of PEMDAS. So two squared is four plus negative two squared, which is also four. Notice we're squaring everything. So in the end, should you have any negative numbers? Because we're squaring everything. If you square a positive or you square a negative, either way, you're going to get a positive value. So at this point, we're still under the radical. We haven't done anything to get rid of that radical, but we need to do the addition part of PEMDAS, which is four plus four, and we get eight. So notice it's kind of, notice what happens with my radical each step. It got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Now here's what the, the arrow, and I want you to write this in your notes. When you get to this step, okay, you need to have a single positive number. Okay, if you do not, you've done something wrong up in your PEMDAS. Because you're squaring everything at this step right here, really from this step on, you should have nothing but positives because your equation is a plus and then you're squaring two things, which is always gonna give you a plus. So from that, for that step where we square everything down, you should deal with nothing but positives. Yes, sir. So it didn't have right 
No, I just do that in my notes so you can see where I'm putting everything. You do not have to rewrite the formula every time. Um, something I want to point out is in the instructions, it says round to the nearest tenth. So now this should be this next, this last step of the answer should be very, very form, uh, familiar to you. It's not a d squared, so we don't, we're not taking the square root of both sides. This is just a simple simplifying step. So you're going to take your calculator, you're going to put the square root of eight. It's not perfect. So it's going to come out 2.8284, blah, blah, blah. We're going to round to the nearest tenth. So the distance between these two points is 2.8. And there are no labels on our units on any of the 10.5. So you don't have to worry about any labeling of units here, feet, inches, all that. So that's just your answer. Okay. So if it's not a right triangle, as long as we have all the vertice coordinates, we can find the length of all three sides. Okay. And this is where a little bit of the patience come in, comes in in this next problem. So that's just a basic example of the distance formula. Now I want to kind of put it into play with an actual triangle. All right, let's look at the directions. It says classify each triangle by its sides. Okay, that's important, by its sides. Well, to classify it by its sides, we need to know if none of them are the same, if two of them are the same, or if all of them are the same. If none of them are the same, what's it called? Scalene. If two of them are the same, it is? isosceles and if they're all the same it is beautiful so we have to know first what the side lengths are before we can decide if it is scalene isosceles and then it goes on to say find the perimeter of each triangle and round to the nearest tenth okay so if we're finding the perimeter of the triangle if you think about if i were to go out there and draw a triangle on the ground and say walk the perimeter and tell me how far you walked what would you do and add up each side. So to find the perimeter, you need to make yourself a note of this. Perimeter, whoops, let's do that in pen, not in highlighter. Perimeter is adding all three sides, okay? That's what finding the perimeter means. And then when it asks us to classify it by its sides, that's where we're gonna have the scalene, the isos, yeah, I saw, don't know if that's spelled right, or equilateral. Let me just put that, okay? Scalene isosceles are equilateral. So this one takes a lot of work, takes a lot of patience, and I'm gonna show you why. We've got three sides. We have got to find the length of all three sides in three separate problems. So first we're gonna find the red side, and I'm gonna label this the red side. If you have highlighters and you're a color note taker, this is a good place to use it. So on the red line, okay, that red line from A to C, I'm gonna use the A coordinate of three nine, and I'm gonna use the C coordinate of negative five, negative two. And now I'm gonna use the distance formula, and I'm gonna find the side length of the red side. So I'm gonna label my X and Y here. So I've got X two, Y two, x1, y1, and now I'm going to start plugging in. So it's distance equals, and then underneath the radical, I've got my change in x's. So three, now notice the equation is three, or it's x minus x. Well, you got to look and see what happens here, okay? Let me highlight my x's here. It's x, that is not a highlighter. There we go. Let's try that again. All right, we've got x2, minus x1. So in my formula, I have got x2 minus a minus five. Yeah, you gotta be careful here when you're plugging into a formula. If you're plugging in a negative value, remember if your equation says minus, minus a minus. So make sure you fill it all in before you start trying to simplify. I promise you shortcuts will not actually be shortcuts here, okay? All right, all of that is squared plus, now I've got my change in Y's. My Y's are not, I did it again. My Y's are nine and negative two. So when I'm plugging that into my formula, I've got nine minus a minus two, and I'm gonna square that. So patience here is the key. 
Okay, so three minus a minus five, well, that goes plus, and three plus five is eight, and we're gonna square that. And then nine minus a minus two goes plus, and that's 11, and we're gonna square that. Still working under the radical, we're gonna square eight, which is 64. We're gonna square 11, which is 121. Still under the radical, we're gonna add that together and we get 185. And now at this point, this is where we've, we've got a positive, single positive number, we're good. We're gonna get our calculator. We're gonna put 185 under a radical and it equals 13.6. That's rounding to the 10th. That is just the distance of the red side. Now we got to start all over again and we have to do the distance of another side. So we're going to call that the blue side. And for the blue side, we're going to use what two coordinates? We're going to use A and B because those are the two points that make up the blue side. So we're going to use three and nine and we're going to use two and negative eight. And now I'm gonna go through this whole process again. I'm gonna find the distance on that blue line. So my distance equals, I've got my X2 and my Y2 and my X1 and my Y1. So now I'm gonna plug it in. X2 is three minus, I'm sorry, yeah, minus two. And I'm gonna square that plus my change in my y's. So it's nine, notice it's nine minus a minus eight. So you gotta be careful here. We're gonna square that. Three minus two is one squared plus nine minus a minus, that goes plus. So nine plus eight is 17 squared. So that's my multiplication part. I did my parentheses first. Now I'm going to do my exponents. One squared is one, 17 squared is, I believe it's 289, is that right? Yes, 289. I'm gonna add those two numbers together to get 290. And now I'm gonna take the square root of 290 and I'm gonna round it to the nearest tenth. And the distance of the blue line is 17 point zero. Now, was my blue line longer than my red? Let's use some common sense here. That's good that I got a bigger number than red, right? If you get a smaller number, make sure your distances here make sense with your picture. All right, last but not least, we've got this line right here. And we need to do the same process again for the green line. We have to find the distance of the green line. So we're going to take the coordinates of C and B this time, because those are the two vertices that make up the green line. So C is negative five and negative two, and B is two and negative eight. So now here we go again, let's label them, right? We've got X2, Y2, X1, Y1, and we're gonna plug in again. And we've got distance equals, The change in x's, so we've got negative five, right? This is my first x, minus two. That's my change in x's. My change in y's is negative two minus, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do it now. Minus and minus eight goes plus. Really helps if you say it in your head when you're plugging them in, it really helps if you say the minus and minus, it really does. All right, so let's, Inside the parentheses, we're going to reduce here. Negative two or negative five minus two is negative seven. And we're gonna reduce inside the other parentheses, negative two plus eight is six. Now we're gonna square both terms. This is where everything should run positive. Seven squared is 49 or negative seven squared is 49. Six squared is 36. Now I'm ready to add 49 plus 36 equals 85, and now I'm ready to take the square root of 85 and turn it into a decimal, and I get 9.2. And again, should this make sense? Was green my shortest line in my graph? It was. 
So first of all, let's classify this by sides. Is it scalene, isosceles, or equilateral? Scalene, because none of them are the same. And what's the perimeter? Well, the perimeter equals 13.6 plus 17.0 plus 9.2, which equals, what is it? 29.8? Okay, there we go. There's our perimeter. A lot of work. You can see the work that goes into this little answer right here. Is that right? 39.8. I was taking your word for it. We're good. 39.8. Everybody agree with that? All right. There's our perimeter. So a lot of work goes into getting the answer of scalene and the perimeter. Okay. And I'm not going to work the one at the bottom, but I just want to tell you this. Draw a picture. I promise you it will help. Draw a picture of your triangle and it doesn't have to be to scale, right? Just draw a picture of your triangle, label your vertices, A, B, and C, and then label them. A is negative three, five. B is negative three, negative one and C is seven negative one. The reason I say this is because you're still gonna have to do the red side, the blue side, the green side. You're still gonna have to find three side links. And then look what it asks you to do. It asks you to uh, find the perimeter of each triangle. So on this one, you don't even have to say scalene, isosceles or equilateral. You just simply have to find the perimeter, okay? And of course it says round to the nearest 10. Your homework looks identical to this and I whited out a lot of your homework problems because like I said, it's kind of overkill to do like a hundred of these. So I whittled it down to just a couple of each. All right, for those of you at home, make sure you take good notes, make sure you show your work on Cami, and email me if you have any questions.